Hey guys, hope everyone's doing well. This is Ryan coming at you from Oregon. Hope everyone had a great happy Thanksgiving. Today's topic is on tech sales versus cyber sales. And this is a little bit of a spontaneous thing. Um, and I hate, I don't really edit videos. I pretty much just stream of consciousness. So might mess up a few times. <clears throat> so I hope everyone had a great Thanksgiving. I am, I had like two weeks of Thanksgiving. I had 25 people over at my house for Friendsgiving. And then I had my fiance's family's Thanksgiving with my parents there too, it was awesome. And then we had our another Thanksgiving. So I've had a lot of Thanksgiving through the last two weeks. So I am ready for, I think we're having Thai food tonight, which is, I'm excited. So tech sales and cyber sales, why are we talking about this? Why is it important? Um, if you've seen the channel before, you know that I'm very passionate about potentially upgrading your sales ability because sales goes into all areas of life. You know, you use sales for everything. If you're doing a job interview for a new company, you're selling yourself to that company. If you are a cybersecurity engineer, and I know there's a lot of engineers on this channel, right? To get to the next level, if you start at the base, you want to learn the, the basic information, but to get to the next round, the people that become project managers, directors, they have sales abilities, meaning they can communicate to their team. They can communicate to other people, communicate to clients. They're not a salesperson, but they're still having those skill sets. They have communication skills, sales and persuasion, persu persuasion skills, and negotiation skills. And you want to manifest and really level up those abilities. And tech sales is a really great way to do it. So tech sales, which has become a lot bigger in the last few years, and a lot of that is because we keep hearing stories of people who were making minimum wage and all of a sudden they got a tech sales role and now they're making a great base and amazing commission. So you have that ability to do it. Um, it's not the only sales out there, but it's a great way if, if, you know, if you're, you're, you're looking for something, if you're in school, doing that part-time is really good. If you're not going to college, fine. It's a really good way to break into the system or if you're just looking for a career change. I would recommend look at least taking a look into tech sales. Always make sure you're following your gut intuition, as I've talked about on this channel. But if you're not really sure, consider looking into tech sales. So let's talk about a few different things. How much can you make tech sales versus cyber sales? And I was doing a little research on this. So around now, the national average, the base of tech sales is $61,000 a year. Okay. Total with commission, it's about $97,000 a year. That's great considering that the, you know, the average salesperson currently in the US, and this is just across all industries, is $47,000 a year. Okay. That's new. So basically, in tech sales already, you're making twice as much as the national average in all the other sales areas. So that's already a pretty good thing. Now, cyber sales. Let's talk about cyber sales. The base of cyber sales is $80,000 a year, right? Total compensation, $110,000 a year, okay? So national average for salespeople, again, $47,000 a year. The average for tech sales is 97,000. The average for cyber sales is 110,000. So a lot of people are thinking like, I should just go to cyber sales. Well, not necessarily. With, you wanna make sure that you know, and that's the thing you keep hearing. I know a lot of people are hearing that they're making oh, like amazing commissions. I'm making 200, 300, $400,000 a year. Yeah. But is that common? I'm sure that person is, but I want to know what is the 80% doing? What are the, what is the 80% doing as well as what is the, the you know, high achievers doing? You know, how would I rank myself? How long did it take them? You want to start asking those questions. Okay. This is how you kind of find that blueprint of success within the company you're in or the industry you're going into. So with tech sales, uh, going back to that, you want to make, it, usually rule of thumb is you're making twice the amount of base. So if your base is about $50,000, you want to kind of calculate that like, okay, ideally all the salespeople in this company are making 100,000, okay? And you ask the recruiter or the HR or the CEO, how many people are making this on commission? How long did it take them? What is the top 20% of your company doing? You want to ask certain questions like that. It looks like to me, tech sales, you know, a lot of people are going into, it's a really great way to learn good skill sets. 
Cyber sales, it seems like they're very um, specific on who they're hiring. The majority of them have college degrees. Some of them even have master's degrees, hence the high base salary. Um, I would recommend maybe checking out both. I think there's a lot more competition in tech sales, but if you can get into it, you're going to learn skill sets faster. If you can get into cyber sales, great. You'll probably get a larger income starting off. Over time, it doesn't really matter because if you build a book of business over two to five years in tech sales or cyber sales, you'll probably make the exact same commission. They're, they're pretty neck and neck. So do research on both types of companies and look at the places that you think you would fit in. What, what resonates with you with their product? And that's the other thing too. I would not recommend just like jumping into any company that has, you know, that's just going to offer you tech sales. It has to come when you're talking to consumers or companies, if it's B2C or B2B, it has to resonate from you. There has to be, you have to like what you're selling. Otherwise, you're going to quit after three months. It's not going to be fun. Um, it's going to be considered a grind. Okay. The money's nice, but you have to be enthusiastic about the product or at least believe that this product is going to help the other person. Okay. So make sure you're looking at the research, you're looking at the, you're keeping those things in, in, into consideration. So should you go through, you know, when you're deciding on a company in tech sales or cyber sales, what kind of company should you be looking for? Well, if it's a company that's been around for a while and it has a good, you know, if they have like a hundred people, that's awesome. I want to know the leadership of the company. I want to know the sales cycle. How long it takes? What is the duration? What is the commission breakdown? I want to know the training that goes involved. If you're just starting off in, in your career or if you're brand new to tech sales, if you're brand new to it, I would recommend starting off with a larger company because they have systems in place that are, that are working and you can learn a lot more from that. You're learning from the people that are doing it. Nothing wrong with the startup. Again, use your intuition. But generally, I would go with a bigger company. Make sure that you're also, if you're going with a smaller company, if you're making with a smaller company, make sure that you really resonate with that product or service. It has to come from like within. It really like, you know, oh my God, I love this group. And you can see them in the market where their position is. Meaning like, what is their competition? Are they are they priced effectively? Right, all these things. I I'm going to be jumping into a few other startups actually in the near future, and I did all this research. Where were they in the market? What? How big is the company? What is the sales cycle? What is the duration? Um, and I'm looking forward to it because it's going to start in a few weeks. But you want to make sure you're also looking at the day to day. If you're doing a full sales desk, 80% of your day is going to be lead generation. The other 20% is going to be demonstrations or side-by-sides or, you know, talking to clients, you know, getting better at your skill sets, uh, maintenance, administrative work. And this is why a lot of companies, when you're, when you're starting off at a startup, you're doing it all. There's no like, you know, SDR, BD, you know, you're not, you don't have, by the way, that's sales development representative and then business development. They're not two separate areas. You're doing it all which could be very exciting. If I had to pick like a ideal career path and it's never ideal, but here's my ideal, my idea of an ideal one. After college, I would recommend going right into tech sales from a big company that's between 50 to hundred people. That means they have room for growth and they're already there. So you have great training. I do that for two to five years. You learn all the great systems, right? Get a great commission. You're making money. You're bettering your skill sets. You are managing people probably after a few years. And then if you can either stay there, if you love it, or if it goes completely a, a different direction or something happens, guess what? You can go to a smaller company and now you have those skills that you can do it all, right? At first it's segmented between SDR and BD and you want to learn those skills. And then when you go to a smaller company, you're doing a full uh, sales cycle desk. And that's like the next level of your skill sets, as well as you probably get bigger commission than a result, but it takes a lot of time to do both. So things to consider. Training. We talked about skill sets. 
you want to have good skill sets. Negotiation, communication, sales, persuasion. Um, there's definitely two tech sales schools that I recommend. I will put them in the description below. The reason I recommend them is because they actually have job placement after their school, which I really, really like. Um, it helps out a lot of people where they go through their process and then afterward, there's some kind of work placement ready to go or internship ready to go, okay? So you're not just going through it and then you, you're you looking for a job again, right? Um, as you guys know, I do offer services for getting trained in your ability to interview. If you wanna do a mock interview, if you wanna do some career consulting, if you wanna do like questions on how to present yourself, you can book a time with me Ideally, you basically go through these tech schools, learn all the schools, start networking while you're doing the tech school, by the way. Network while you're doing it. You're going through, you know, choose top um, 20 to 30 best companies that you would like to work for that are looking for tech sales or cyber sales people in your local area. Um, make a list of that and start networking with the HR, uh, business development head, CEO if it's a smaller company, right away. Do your tech sales training through the schools. Usually they last about one to three months. Um, one of them I, I was talking to, uh, I was very impressed with them. But they do uh, a month if you're doing it full-time, three months if it's part-time. And then they do job placement right after, which is pretty phenomenal. But during that time, if you have three months of part-time, start networking during those three months. So on the same day you start doing uh, tech sales training, network at the same time and then maybe before your interview you can contact me and we, I can help you out too <laughs> but I would definitely recommend doing that on top of that work on your communication skills at the same time there's a lot of great references um, some of the things I, I've recommended in the past Brian Tracy great things on public speaking and sales that I learned when I like had 15 years ago now on how I used to do recruiting and that was all sales stuff and it was like I had to run a full desk so recommend doing that um, but yeah that's I think some pretty full advice don't know if I'm missing anything if there's any questions you have feel free to comment below I'll try to answer them as best I can uh, I do get a lot of emails but I, I love the fact that people reach out and I try to speak to people one-on-one -on -one when I can um, look below in the description for some of the best tech sale, uh, tech sales schools that I recommend, um, as well as some other tools in sales that I've, I've used to increase my income personally, um, three times before. So definitely hope those, uh, those help out and it's Friday. So I'm looking for the weekend. We got a Christmas parade tomorrow. It's going like right, right by my house here by the river in beautiful Oregon. Uh, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Okay. Have a good one. Cheers.